Okay, what we're going to be going over here are some ratios to examine the liquidity of the company and also the use of its assets here. And we'll start with the current ratio that measures the short-term ability of the company to meet its current maturing obligations. And what that is is the current assets divided by its current liabilities. That equals the current ratio. It's also referred to as the working capital ratio. And it, what it determines here is the excess of the current assets over the current liabilities. Now, it's a satisfactory the satisfactory current ratio here does not disclose the portion of the current assets that may be tied up in slow moving inventories such as raw materials and work in process. The question is how long will it take to transform these inventories into finished products for sale? Eliminating inventories and prepaid expenses from the amount of the current assets provides better information here for short term creditors. Therefore we would use the asset test ratio which excludes the inventory. So our Asset test ratio, also referred to as the quick ratio here. What we do is we take our cash, plus our short-term investments here, plus our net receivables, and divide it by the current liabilities. Now, the asset test ratio eliminates the, eliminates the assets that might be slow moving, like we talked about the inventory here and those prepaid expenses. Okay, now let's look at another ratio here, the debt to total assets. That would be our total liabilities divided by the total assets here. Now, the debt to total assets ratio provides the creditors with some idea of the company's ability to withstand losses without impairing the interest of the creditors. Okay, now let's move up here and look at the rate of return here on assets. That's simply taking our net income here, dividing it by the average total assets. So the rate of return on assets measures the return of the company is earning on its average total assets and provides one indication related to the profitability of the company. And what we mean by average total assets here, say um, we're given a balance sheet here, whatever we're giving year one or in year two um, uh, numbers on our balance sheet here for our um, uh, total assets here. So we take year one total assets plus year two total assets here and divide it by two. That's going to give us our average total assets here. Okay, now let's look at the accounts receivable turnover ratio here. So that would be our net sales divided by our average trade receivables here. So the accounts receivable turnover ratio that measures the number of times on average a company collects receivables during the period. And what we mean again by average here is you take the year one account receivables here on a comparative balance sheet here plus the year two accounts receivable and add those together here and divide them by two. That's going to give your average uh, trade receivable or accounts receivable. Okay, now let's look at the inventory turnover ratio. And that's simply our cost of goods sold divided by the average inventory. Now the inventory turnover ratio that measures the number of times on average a company sells inventory during the period here. So again, what we mean by average here, if we look at comparative uh, years uh, balance sheet, we take the year one inventory here plus the year two inventory divided by two. That gives us our average inventory. And then lastly, let's look at the profit margin here on sales. That's simply our net income divided by our net sales here. So again, the profit margin on sales, it's also the rate of return here on sales. And it's a measure for analyzing the use of the property, plant, and equipment of the company. And it's how the company uses its assets. So we just went through some real quick ratios here that we'd typically be using here to examine the liquidity of the company and also its use of assets.